Revelation 9, 11. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Bless this word now, Lord. Bless it in Jesus' name. So we have, coming up out of the pit, hell itself. Now, I haven't dealt much with these creatures that come up. You'll find them described in the first few verses of chapter number 9 of Revelation. That's for a future study. But this morning, uh, I'm going to move on from dark matter and antimatter into, uh, into what's happening when we connect that with, uh, with what's going on right now. For example, CERN is about uh, opening portals. It's about reaching into uh, another dimension and various terminology they're using. I'll read some of it for you in just a moment. But here's the important part to understand, and I'm going to try to emphasize this from here on out because this is what I see in it. It is the merger of science and religion. Keep that in mind. That's what this is about. And depending on what, uh, what entities involved, what group, what church, whatever, they all have their own agenda, sure. But the bottom line is that it is the merger of science and religion like I have never seen in my few short years on this earth. Now, CERN is uh, to attempt the Big Bang in March, it says, and this was uh, uh, written three months ago. And I wanted to give you one more time, I want to read for you the warning from Stephen Hawking. And uh, Stephen Hawking is, is, uh, is of the discipline of called a theoretical physicist. Now, I found out when you get studying this stuff, you've got all kinds of different types of physicists. And, uh, but Hawking is a theoretical physicist. And he, these are his words. This, this, uh, this opening up, this gate, this, this going into uh, the, what's called the Higgs boson to try to find that could destroy the universe. Now, I want you to let that settle in for a moment because uh, this man is speaking strictly from an academic viewpoint, and he says that what's happening in CERN, Switzerland, could destroy the universe. Now, let me give you this, this disclaimer, and I need to do this constantly with you as we go through this and study this. I am not telling you that I am endorsing anybody that I quote. I am not telling you that I necessarily agree with everything that I give you. What I am trying to do is to lay this out before you for you to consider and think about because there are a lot of possibilities going on here and we need to be informed. Uh, and informed people are, a, are, are, are uh, armed. Ignorance is very expensive. And my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, he said in the book of Hosea. So. Uh, I may give you some hypothetical situations that seem wild and unplausible, but I want you to think about these things because some of the stuff that I give you is going to come from some of the most brilliant minds on this earth. So as Stephen Hawking says plainly that what's going on in CERN could destroy the universe. Well, what is going on in CERN? And I want to read uh, some of the statements that come from these people. And here's what, uh, here's what one says. Sergio Bertolucci, the director of the Research and Scientific Computing at CERN. Here's what he says. The Large Hadron Collider, and that's that thing that is 17 miles in circumference, about 300 feet beneath the surface of the Earth. The Large Hadron Collider could open a doorway to an extra dimension, and out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it. Now, of course, that begs the question, what do you expect to come out of that door, or what would you send through that door? And the bottom line, he doesn't have a clue, because he's in the area that is unknown, and he is, he, he's venturing out into the unknown to try to, and this is why Stephen Hawking is so alarmed, is for the simple reason that he understands to try to put it in layman's terminology, they're messing with something 
that they cannot control and they may open Pandora's box and when they do it they won't be able to put this creature back in the box. Now think about it for a moment. Here is a scientist, a physicist, saying, and he's the head of the, he's the head of CERN, Bertolucci, saying uh, something could come through that door, or we could send something through that door. Now, what door are you talking about? The door, of, to, it was my understanding, would be at the moment that they have collided these uh, the protons, and I think but I'm not sure if they're using other uh, 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 particles, but uh, we do know they're using protons, and the moment they collide these and uh, continue to, uh, to uh, do scientific analysis of what they're working with. They're trying to reach the point of what's called singularity. The point of singularity is when they have reduced the particle to its, to its I suppose, to its simplest form, to its lowest state, to its, to it, to its uh, singularity by the word itself implies uh, to the one element, I suppose. I cannot speak scientifically about this. I speak as a preacher of the Word of God and as a student of the Bible. But the point is that once they reach this point of singularity, they have reached what they consider to be the point of where the Big Bang was initiated, where it started. In other words, the elements that came together to produce everything that you know today. And here's the, here's the thing. They do not know many of these elements that came together to produce what you know today. And there, 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 therein lies the, uh, uh, the mystery and the danger that Stephen Hawking's talking about. Now, I believe in my heart that this physicist is trying to say to you and to me and everyone else who will listen, we are about to embark upon, a, embark upon a pioneer effort. We're moving into the unknown. We do not know what's going to come through this door. Uh, in other words... Uh, it may be more going on here than simply uh, uh, what physics can define or describe. There, there may be an element here that doesn't fit our, our uh, standard model. There may be something coming through here that we've never seen before. Uh, for example, a creature. A creature. Something that would uh, come through that. Uh, in other words, maybe an extraterrestrial. <coughs> as they as they call them maybe that would be coming through there whatever who knows but the bottom line is something is going to come through that door and he's going to send something through that door now we need to keep that in mind because they are opening as I believe and I think most of you in here this morning believe the gates of hell now here's what Another uh, physicist has to say about the same thing. And here's what he says. The idea of multiple universes is more than a fantastic invention and deserves to be taken seriously. This is Aurelien Barou, French particle physicist at CERN. Now let me read that again. The idea of multiple universes is more than a fantastic invention and deserves to be taken seriously. That's a big statement. That's the kind of statement you need to, to take home and chew on for a while and meditate about. Now here's James Morgan, BBB, BBC science reporter. CERN's governing council wanted to build a kind of time machine that could open a window to how the universe appeared in the first microseconds of its existence. We might even find evidence of the existence of other dimensions. But to conjure up these conditions, the CERN Council knew it needed to perform an engineering miracle. All right, now that we've read what these scientists have to say, let's introduce to you this morning the Vatican. Now, how many of you all, how many of you know when I say Vatican, what I'm talking about? I'm talking about a sovereign government that prints its own money, that sends out its own representatives, just like any other state does in the world. But it is also a church. All right? Now, I don't know of another church on the face of this earth that has that kind of authority. Do you? Do you know of another church that ha that's a sovereign that can print its own money? But the Vatican does. 
Vatican astronomers are searching for alien life, say authors. And this is a quotation from the Ecumenical News, May 15, 2015, if you want to follow up on what I'm giving you. Two evangelical authors are set to release a book which claims that Jesuit astronomers at a Vatican-owned observatory in Arizona are using their telescope and another one called Lucifer to search for extraterrestrial life. The telescope is located on Mount Graham in Arizona. And uh, this is a, a very sacred site to the uh, Indians and Native Americans that live around there. It's one of four sacred mountains, very sacred. Not sacred because, uh, ostensibly, because they bury their dead. It's sacred, they say, because to them it is a gateway. It is a place that opens up to another dimension. And it's strange how that these Indians, these Native Americans, would 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 hold would would believe that would would see it as that and then and then we have such a dog fight that took place for them to build this observatory on top of Mount Graham. Now this is what's said about the observatory that it is the it, it, some have said that it is the most powerful telescope on the face of the earth and that it rivals and some say even surpasses uh, Hubble that is in the sky, that, is, that isn't affected by the atmosphere and what have you the, of, the, of the planet. So they are, they, are, they are peering deep into space and they're looking for something and now they're saying something is coming and they're preparing for what's coming. And it all goes together and presents this scenario for you. And I'll read some of this. What is even more astonishing, the two authors, Tom Horn and Chris Putnam, say in their book that the Vatican is awaiting an alien savior. The claims in the book called Exo Vaticana, Vaticana, Petrus Romanus, Project Lucifer, and the Vatican's astonishing plan for the arrival of an alien savior are the result of research the two authors conducted at Mount Graham International Observatory. Although Lucifer in the Bible is associated with Satan, the word has its origins in Hebrew akin to light. The researcher also examined Vatican records. Now watch this carefully. While their claims seem too difficult to believe, Horn and Putnam have backed up their research with primary sources. They are, they are currently discussing their findings with the media. On April the 1st, they appeared on the show of American Messianic Jew Sid Roth, where Putnam revealed what they had uncovered in the research. Quote, the records in the Vatican go back centuries, said Putnam, who is a theologian, I read two chapters of history concerning the Vatican's interest in extraterrestrials. They have a whole theology developed around what they call the principle of plenitude, meaning anything God could do, He would do. So they consider the existence of aliens the inevitable consequence of God's omnipotence, omnipotence. And on they go. So the bottom line is that the Vatican, whether they had announced it publicly before, is certainly investing a lot of money and effort into finding and communicating with these aliens. <coughs> Ask yourself this question this morning. Now, we've had science fiction movies all of our lives. We grew up with flying saucers and all that stuff. Uh, I've told you time and time and time and time and time again, I do not believe UFOs uh, originate from up there. They originate from here. However real they are, they are demonic. That's what I believe. And I haven't seen anything yet to shake my belief in that. But I do not doubt the existence of UFOs, Bigfoot, uh, the Loch Ness Monster, all these other, uh, they call it cryptozoology. You get into a field of cryptozoology, you get into all kinds of stuff. Blow your mind of what's out there. The lizard man, the moth man up in West Virginia and all this stuff. They belong in the field of what's called cryptozoology. And uh, you, 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 spend, you could spend months just studying that. But here's, here's, here's the bottom line. There is a connection, apparently, between the appearance of UFOs and Bigfoot and the moth man and the lizard man and whatever, whatever other... Uh, uh, manifestation you talk about, there seems to be a correlation going on between the UFOs and these things. And let me add you add this while I'm on UFOs. This is not about UFOs today, but this is important. You